If you're looking for a way to take bookings or appointments on your WordPress site, then look no further. As in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of easy ways to get you set up and taking bookings in no time at all. So let's take a look at the forms we're going to be creating for this video. First up, we're going to create a booking form with WP Forms, which really is the best form builder for WordPress. It's super easy to use with lots of form templates and a nice drag and drop builder. So if you've never created a form before, this is definitely the plugin you wanna use for your site. We will be using the pro version for this video as it's got some really great templates and powerful add-ons, which makes life nice and easy. For both of the methods in this video, you will need to install and activate the plugins before we get started. I'll just show you how to do that with WP Forms. Head to the WP Forms website and sign up for an account. Once you've logged into your account, go to downloads. Here we need to download the WP Forms Pro plugin file to our computer. And then you can copy the license key by clicking this button. Now head back to your WordPress dashboard and go to plugins, hover over that and click add new. We can then click on the upload button at the top of the screen here. You can either choose a file from your computer or drag and drop the zip plugin file here. After you've done that, click the install now button. Now the plugin's gonna install and once the plugin has been installed, you'll see an activate button. Click on that and the plugin will be activated. Now we have WP Forms installed, we need to add the license key that we copied from the website. To do that, go to WP Forms here on the left of the screen, hover over that and click on settings. We can paste our license key here and click the verify button. We now have the pro version of WP Forms installed on our site. From the WordPress dashboard, let's head over to the WP Forms menu item. Hover over that and click Add New. I'm going to call my form 3 Day Event. For this video, we're going to use a template to give us a jump start in putting this form together. As you can see, WP Forms has a ton of templates to use. If we look at the left of the screen, we can see there is a way to filter them to more specific uses. The form we're going to be creating is for an online 3 day event. So I will head to Events and then select the online event RSVP form. To select, hover over the template and then click the Use Template button. Let's take a look at this form and see what we want to change. If you hover your mouse over the form, you'll see that it's broken up into the sections and these sections are called fields. As this is an online event RSVP form, it has a field where the attendees can add their name and email address. You'll notice a red asterisk next to the labels on these fields. And that just means this information has to be completed for the form to be submitted. The name field currently asks for the first and last name, but if we click on that field, we can change the format to simple if we're happy just having people's first names, or we can ask for them to include any middle names too. Below the email field, we have a multiple choice field where they can tell us about how they heard about the event. We can edit these choices by clicking on the field. All these details can help us build up an email list for future events and also help us understand what marketing channels are working with our intended audience. Towards the bottom of the form, we have a drop down field where they can select the amount of tickets they need. If we click on that, we can change the choices available. So if we only want people to be able to book four tickets, then we can remove one by clicking the delete button. This choose the date and time field is useful, but if you have an event on specific set days, I would say a drop down or multiple choice field here would be better. Let's just add one in for this form. So I'm gonna remove the date field by clicking the trash icon that appears when you hover over the field. To add a field, just click here at the top left of the screen. Now we can see all the fields we can use. I'm going to add another drop down field, so I'll drag and drop that into place. Let's change the label to choose date. Now we can add in more choices down here by clicking, naming, and pressing the add button if we need more choices. If we know the choices we want, perhaps we have them written down in a document or an email, then we can use the bulk add button. All we have to do is write or copy the choices into this box, making sure there is one choice per line. Click the add new choices button and those will be added in below. Make sure your choices look right and then toggle the required option here. When you're happy with your form, hit the save button at the top right. With the form finished, I'm now going to look at the email notifications that attendees receive after submitting the form. So let's head to the settings area by clicking here on the left of the screen. 
we want the notifications option. This is the default notification that is sent out to your admin email address to notify you of a form submission. Now don't worry if you don't understand these words in brackets, I'll explain what they are and it's pretty simple when you understand them. These are called smart tags and you can add them by clicking on the button next to each field. Essentially a smart tag is a bit of code that is linked to part of the form that has been submitted. If I open the one next to the email subject line, we can see that we can choose to pull in certain information like the user's name, email address or event date. This is an awesome way to make your notifications more dynamic and personalised for the user. To create a new notification, all we have to do is duplicate this notification by clicking this button here. We can rename the notification by clicking the edit button. Let's remove the email admin address from the send to field and add the smart tag for the attendee email address. We can make the subject line a bit more personal by adding in the tag for the attendee's name. The from email address can be from either the admin email or another one that you have set up. Change the reply field to either the admin email address or the one you want to receive attendees replies or questions to. For the message, I'm going to copy the email message I've pre-written in a note app for speed. Once you have that done, click save to save the notification. Now we have our form all set up, we can publish it on our website. To do that, all we need to do is head to the page we want to add the form to. Using the Gutenberg editor, we can quickly find our form by clicking the add button at the top left, typing WP in the search box, and we can now see the WP forms widget, and we can click on that or drag it into place. We can now select our booking form from the drop down. It will be displayed on the page and all you have to do now is hit the update or publish button and then the form will be live on your website. With that done, now we're going to look at adding a more advanced type of form to our website and for that there is no better plugin than Formidable Forms. Formidable Forms makes it easy to add booking forms with advanced features like calculations and connects to many great third party apps. We'll be using the pro version of Formidable Forms because it has some really fantastic templates to get us started quickly and easily. Let's get started. From the WordPress dashboard, click on Formidable in the menu area. We are now under the Forms section and this is where we will see all the forms we create. To add a new form, click the Add New button at the top. Formidable Forms has a load of great templates to choose from. I totally encourage you to check them out. The one I'm looking for is in the Event Planning subsection which I'll just type event in the search bar here. I'm going with the online event registration form. We can change the name and give the form a description if we want. Click the create button when you're happy with that. As you can see, we now have a great base to build our form off with lots of fields already added in for us. On the left of the screen is the field section. It's currently on add fields, so we can drag and drop any of these fields into place to add them to our form and build it up. On the right of the screen is the form itself and if we hover over any of the fields we can easily see where each field is and what it contains. We can drag these into any order we want by clicking and holding. If we click a field we can now edit its settings in the field options section on the left of the screen. If we want to delete or duplicate a field we can do that by hovering over the field and going to the more options button at the top right. Let's change the multiple choice field to add in email as an option and then change the number of tickets available to four by deleting an option on the drop down field. When you're happy with your design, click update to save your changes. Formidable Forms has some really powerful action and notification features. So once the form has been submitted, it can trigger these actions and notifications to happen. If we go to the settings area of this form and then to actions and notifications, under actions, we can open this up and see there are many actions that can happen with this form. We can send an email, create a post, or register a user along with collecting payments, connecting to email marketing, and a CRM. If we click on the default email notification, we can see it's very similar to what we got with WP Forms. If we close that and click on the action send email, we can now build out an email focused on the attendee. We can rename the notification so it's easy to reference for us. We can create different notifications based on the triggers that we select in this dropdown. 
So this message could go out after the entry is updated or even after a successful payment. I'm going to set the email address to be the users. We can change the from email address to anything we want if we have a different email address for specific replies or queries. I'll add in my subject and message just like I did from the previous example. We do have the option to add attachments to this email too which can be really handy. When you're happy with that email notification, hit update to save the changes. Now it's just a matter of adding the form to an existing or new page. There's a really cool feature here at the top right for that. Click on the embed button and we get an option to add the form to an existing page or create a new page and insert it. I'm going with an existing page, so I select the page and then hit insert. The form is now instantly dropped onto the page and if you're using Gutenberg, you can easily drag the form into the place you want. We can now publish or update the page and the booking form will be live on our website. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, then check out this video, which shows you how to create a user registration form on your WordPress site. Thanks for watching.